All right, wonderful beings. Thanks for the first podcast of the Soul Sisters with EMC Squared in the house. We are here with the fabulous Krista Clark, with the fantastical Erica Vetra, and me, Ula. So this is our intro call. We're going to give you a little bit of a synopsis of who we are and what we intend to bring to you on a weekly basis. So, Miss Erica, since you're shining bright on the screen. As long us, as I don't move back, the light, <laughs> the light will be okay. Give us a 411 on Miss Erica. And did I say that right? Is it Vetra? Yes, ma'am. All right, yes. cool. All right, cool. Um, yeah, cool. So um, I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited to be doing this with you guys. Um, just a quick background on who I am. Um, I am originally from upstate New York. Um, no I, accent. You don't have an accent. I know it's weird. I somehow got away from that. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> I think it's just from years of teaching. Um, right. So I, let's see, I'm originally from upstate New York, grew up here, um, went to college in the Hudson Valley. Um, my background as a kid was really heavily influenced by my dad, who's a musician. Um, and my parents were really into Tai Chi and, uh, and kind of like, you know, jazz music and classical music. So I sort of have that, um, I sort of had that growing up, which I think is what got me into um, learning to play music and also uh, discovering yoga. I didn't do much Tai Chi, just a little bit, but then I found yoga when I was 15, um, kind of by accident, and fell in love with it pretty quickly. Um, I w when I was in college, I kept up my practice. Uh, I studied philosophy and I studied Italian, um, and I discovered I had like a real uh, passion for languages and traveling. So um, it's sort of this muddled mess of years of just running all over the world and um, teaching uh, language, English, um, linguistics, history, um, and Italian uh, in Italy and in New York, sort of back and forth. Um, moved around a little bit more um, to Spain, to Mexico, to Thailand, and um, kept you know practicing yoga through all that time. Um, I started teaching yoga about eight years ago informally when I was living in Italy. Um, a friend of mine owned a gym and, and would see me practicing yoga all the time and asked me to start teaching. And I was like, uh, sure, I guess I could do that. So, um, uh, and I was, I'd been a classroom teacher for a while, so I was comfortable with like the teaching thing, um, but hadn't taught like physical stuff yet. So, um, but I'd been into fitness for a while, so I was like, okay, I can think I can handle this. Uh, so that's how my yoga teaching started. And then um, about- what age, what age was that? What age did you start teaching yoga? 29, I believe. Awesome. Uh, 28, 29, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I moved to Austin, Texas seven years ago and I, and, uh, kept teaching there. Um, I started a career in international education administration, which was, um, interesting and, um, it got me into like the, the, it got me into academia, mm -hmm. um, to the administrative side. And so I spent about five years, um, running study abroad programs because of the whole language travel thing, um, and then doing immigration advising and academic advising for university students. And um, some of it, like conceptually, I was really into. Um, and other parts of it, I was not uh, so much into. I, I, hated, I hated the structure. I hated the rules. I hated who I worked for. I hated the way I was treated. Um, and I just, I, was, I wasn't happy. Um, so throughout all this time, I'd been practicing yoga, teaching yoga. And um, I... Uh, I had, a, I had a series of like epiphanies, <laughs> a series of like revelations, you know, they always come in those dark times. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> which eventually culminated in um, the end of 2013. I remember um, my mom came to visit me for Christmas and um, in Austin and we were sitting on my bed in my bedroom and my mom looks at me and she goes, Erica, you need to quit your job. Mm. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was like validation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for a long time. She, I mean, she just watched me. My mom's like my best friend, and she watched me go through so many um, horrible experiences. With with, I had worked two different jobs in like study abroad program admin in in Austin, and um, I just had all these horror stories with like, you know, awful coworkers, awful bosses, awful treatment. Like I, you know, no, you know, terrible compensation. Like working overtime, all all the bad stuff, you know. And, um, and I was even looking at going to grad school for my master's in international, inter, international education administration. And then I woke up and I was like, what the hell? I'm not going to go. I don't, I don't want to go further into a field that I already, it's not that I hated the field. I just, um, 
I didn't, I just really got sick of playing by other people's rules, other people who didn't respect me or care about me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and all the while I've got yoga on the side, you know, calling me mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and I was teaching yoga part time at a couple studios in Austin. And I just, I was getting nothing but like positive feedback and like energy boosts from that. And from my full-time job, I was getting nothing but like total like crap and mm -hmm. negativity. So I, you know, my mom came to visit and she sat me down and she was like, you need to quit your job. I don't know what you're going to do. And I don't think you should care what you're going to do, but you need to get the hell out and reclaim your like happiness. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right. So <laughs> <laughs> right after New Year's, I, I marched into the office and wrote my letter of resignation. And then that was it. I never looked back. Um, and so uh, that was in early 2014, um, like, or like January, 2014. And um Long story short, I was teaching yoga full time at a couple of studios, um, got fired from one of the studios. Um, it was a long story. It, it happened to a lot of us at the studios run by, you know, people that were um, that were treating us unfairly also. So um, that ended up being the catalyst for starting my own business. Um, mm -hmm. I had decided, yeah, I, I had thought when I quit my full time job that I wanted to start my own business, but I, I didn't have a plan for like when I was going to do it and how and what it was going to look like and the steps I was going to need to take. And then all of a sudden I, I was out of a job um, mm -hmm. a few months later. And um, a lot of us were. And so at first I was really upset and I was like, oh my God, how could this happen to me? I just gave up everything to teach yoga. And then the next day I woke up and I was like, no, this is my turning point. Like I'm starting my own business. And I gave myself a deadline and I just, um, I started working on developing that, which uh, was the hardest I've ever worked. Actually, it was just a crazy amount of work and learning um, and eventually launched my own um, subscription and, you know, started doing the online yoga thing, the, the videos on YouTube and bumping up my social media and stuff like that. Um, started teaching in other studios. Um, and then last winter, just this past winter, I moved uh, back to upstate New York and I'm doing the same thing here and I have never been happier. Um, it's been really awesome. Yeah. Yes. So it just feels good to be like in control of my own um, life, you know. I just got to the point where, I mean, you guys know, I got to the point where I was like, I don't have a long time on this planet in no. this body and I don't. I don't want to live it for someone else who's never going to appreciate the work that I do. Like, why am I trying to please people who don't care? Right. Like, I want to please myself, you know? So, yeah. And so, you know, in your thirties, you quit your job and you become a yoga teacher and your friends are like, Oh, that's nice. Um, <laughs> that's great, Erica. Uh, have you thought about going back to school? <laughs> I was like, you know what? I don't care. Yeah. I'm completely happy doing what You're I do. Sold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so if you don't mind too, and in that, we would love to hear, and, and obviously we're at some point, we're going to have a topic and we'll probably have a whole segment on relationships. Um, yeah. However, um, are you single? Are you in a relationship? Are you married? Kids? Give us a little bit of an idea of where you are with that. Because I'm sure people are going to look at you and go, dang. <laughs> What's up with that? Um, so absolutely. Um, and it's funny because I never, I always assume that everyone knows like that I don't have kids. I, f I feel like everyone would look at me and be like, why would she have kids? And it's true. I don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, not that I don't want them, but, um, but yeah, no, I'm not single. Um, I moved back here for a, for my love that I met, um, a couple of years ago. Yeah. And, um, it turned out he's not from my hometown, but he, he lives here and we met during a vacation when I was back visiting my family. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, I know we're going to be doing episodes on, on the whole like relationship right. love thing, but, um, it's been a really, uh, pivotal point in my life, like a really pivotal relationship. And I, I, without getting too deep into it, I, I feel like I've found, um, the, the person who I'm supposed to be like walking with, if, if that makes sense. So, awesome. and it's a cool feeling. I never, you know, you, you've been in relationships or dated people or with people before had partners. Um, but I never quite got the like partner thing. <laughs> right. That's awesome. I got the boyfriend thing, but I, but it was, it always ended like, uh, get out of here. <laughs> but, <laughs> Our friends with benefits. <laughs> um, no, I've never been married. Um, marriage is still something that makes me a little bit, you know, nervous, but, um, but I am warming up to the idea. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. yeah. And how can, how can people know more about you? What's your website? Where is your studio at? Like, let's say um, they wanted to get more information about Erica. Uh, who are you? Where can they find you? Um, yeah, so I 
I'm a social media person. Um, I, my Facebook is Erica Vetra Yoga and Fitness, um, Vetra, V-E-T-R-A. Um, I'm on it pretty much all the time, so it's really easy to get in touch with me there. Uh, website is just vetrafitness.com. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty basic site uh, because I discovered while I was launching my business that I also hate building websites. So I did, <laughs> <laughs> I did the minimum possible. Um, but yeah, uh, info at Vetra Fitness is my email if you guys need to get in touch or want to get in touch. I run a paid subscription, um, which is like a monthly, you know, uh, access to a video library. And that's on a website called powhow.com. Um, probably the easiest thing is to just drop me an email and, and I, I always answer. So, um, and I, the, honestly, the best part of what I do is being able to just connect with people and get to know people. So I talk to tons of people every day and I love every minute of it. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm absolutely happy to answer questions. And Sweet. I just want to ask one quick question. What music do you play? <laughs> what musical instrument? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, I sort of glossed over that. Um, so when I was three or four, my dad taught me to play the piano. He's a pianist and a trumpet player and percussionist and so I've been playing the piano my whole life and I grew up yeah it's I love it it's I studied classical piano my whole like childhood and teenagehood I guess um and then I started playing the drums when I was in high school oh cool and it's really good for teenage angst so yeah drums are really (laughs) um but I I grew up in like a lot of um in with a lot of musicians just because like I said my dad was playing in bands all the time and then he had a lot of like drum circle friends so (laughs) you know that and I and upstate New York is um there's a lot of like summer festivals and stuff like that so yeah camping drumming and then piano um trying to think if I play anything else I don't think so I try to teach myself guitar but I got I didn't I didn't stick with it it's hard on your fingers yeah awesome cool and that that is Erica so Krista, Krista, tell me about Miss Krista Clark. Who are you? Um, I'm Krista Clark, and I'm married to Gerald Clark. He's um, pretty well known with his research. And um, I wasn't always married to him. I came from Vancouver, Washington, originally Krista Larson. And my family still lives in Washington. I have a really nice, loving family. And uh, my mom actually still helps out with our orders today. She does all our shipping. So if you order anything from our stores, she handles that and sends nice, loving messages. And so thank you. (laughs) And she's got great handwriting. (laughs) (laughs) And um, she's an artist. So from a young age, I was introduced to art. Um, So that's kind of where the artistic vegan name came from. I have a blog, Artistic Vegan, and she's the artistic influence behind me. I do like to dabble with painting and um, drawing and and stuff like that, just kind of amateur, but have fun with it. And um, I moved to California around 21 or 22, and I was working at a health and fitness company. I kind of had a lot of health and fitness influence in my childhood and growing up and a desire for that and had just seen a personal trainer and did my first yoga class and really fell in love with it. And she thought, you'd be a great um, you know, personal trainer. And so I looked into it and found a school in California, quit my job, and in three days just kind of a lot of used the law of attraction and moved <laughs> to California in my little convertible with everything that I owned in there and got rid of everything else. <laughs> and just kind of faked it without a job or anything lined up. And it all worked out, and I did get a job and ended up moving um, closer downtown to make more money and um, decided not to do the personal training thing just because I already had debt. And I thought, I don't need more debt. And so instead, I just worked to get rid of that debt. And I lost sight of my goal and gained a whole bunch of weight and kind of became unhealthy and was with someone that wasn't necessarily on my most high frequency. And we just kind of, but we sat around and like watched reggae videos and had fun. And (laughs) But I wanted more. I wanted to get out and live life a little more, like go to the beach. I mean, we lived in California and walk and, and exercise. And so when I was trying to do a plow and in one of my yoga classes, I had a big stomach roll uh, in my way. <laughs> I was really overweight and I was, I was so embarrassed. I'd walk up the stairs at work, just one flight and I'd be out of breath. And I knew I needed a lifestyle change. And I was around um, California girls and they were, you know, really thin and beautiful and, uh, you know, Christmas after Christmas they'd maintain. And so I kind of looked to them for some guidance and realized I couldn't just eat what I wanted anymore and not work out. <laughs> and so I did a lifestyle change and I went to a seminar 
uh, um, and it was suggested to try vegan one time a week, and then I did that and kind of turned into a Monday Friday thing. And that was just kind of my healthy lifestyle change, where I started working out, walking up and down the hills, doing yoga every day, and Jillian Michaels and everything I could do <laughs> to, to get back. And and um, and at the time, I, I really fell so in love with yoga. I was actually about to become a yoga instructor, and I was I was just on the cusp of that. And I was I was out of a relationship and doing yoga every day and. Um, and around that time I met Gerald and he turned me on to structural integration and we became, uh, went from vegetarian to vegan full time. And, um, and from there I'll share that another story, but our, our lives kind of blossomed and changed and we went around and shared the structural integration work and, uh, and then ended up kind of needing to go back into corporate to make more money. And so we moved back to California and when I started my blog, I was actually working at a biotech company of all places. And so I knew of companies and the, and the dangers of Monsanto and Dow Chemical and DuPont. And all of a sudden, I'm processing orders for these companies and working at a company where, you know, I'm, so I'm working overtime late. Like, Here, have a glass of wine while you process a million dollar order for Monsanto. No biggie. And I have so much internal strife as I'm at night blogging, um, you know, writing about, you know, how important it is to have heirloom seeds and plant an organic garden and eating healthy and, you know, trying a different lifestyle. So I had a really big internal conflict there. And um, so I worked there for as long as needed in our, you know, in our time. And, and in the nights I would, uh, I would write and do my blog. And I think that kind of helped push me through the blog. And from there, I turned that blog into a book and I self-published and that, um, that encouraged Gerald to do the same. He had nine years of research, and in 40 days, he whipped out his book and, and wrote it up. I know, it was amazing. And, and then from there, everything just kind of changed. Our lives changed, and we both ended up leaving our jobs with a series of kind of some unfortunate events. And, but the day that I did get to leave my job, I mean, it felt like the heavens opened up, and it was like, oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and we free. And we haven't gone back since. Um, we have taken, you know, extreme measures to enjoy our life. I mean, a lot of people probably wouldn't give up everything and, and go and live in a travel trailer and, and move to Mexico and <laughs> but we've had so much fun and my second book I've actually I've made most of it while traveling around with a travel trailer so it just gets to show if you want to dream if you want something if you want to do it no matter what your circumstance you can go after it and get it and and now we're in Mexico and having fun and here we are talking and I, I would like to thank Jay for reaching out to Gerald and it's kind of all interconnected and it's right. <laughs> so. yeah. Hey. The, sy the synergies involved in this on all of our relationships is amazing. Yeah. Very, very, cool. Yeah. very, very cool. And so how can people reach you, Krista? Um, they can reach me at artisticvegan.com. I have a contact there or artisticvegan at gmail.com or I'm on Facebook, Instagram. Um, I'm, I'm kind of hit and miss sometimes. I will get back to you. Sometimes I take, uh, I'm not on it every day, but, um, but Mexican internet. Yeah. So <laughs> but I'll come back and I'll get to you, but it might be okay. <laughs> Awesome. Very, very cool. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Uh, so I will give a little synopsis about myself. My name is Monica Diaz. I am married to Jay Campbell. I have an interesting story. I don't know where to begin because I have many more years added on top of each of yours. Oh. And <laughs> I'm a little bit older than the rest of you in physical years. Um, so I... I actually grew up and, and was raised in California. My mom is Mexican. She was born in Culiacan, Sinaloa, and she married um, my dad, who's a white dude. And it's so funny okay. because I remember when we were growing up, she used to always say, hey, Monica, when you, when you grow up, you should marry a white man in a suit. That way you don't have to work so hard. <laughs> and I used to be like, mom, what are you talking about? <laughs> it was funny because growing up, my dad was a severe alcoholic. He, he was rarely around. My mom and dad had four kids, all within three years, and my dad bailed when my, my little brother was three weeks old. Oh, wow. So my mom raised four of us, essentially on her own. So I saw the struggles of raising children, of being in an alcoholic home. You know, it's funny because she would say these things about marrying a white man. I'm like, why would you want us to marry a white man when the white man left you? You're by yourself. What are you doing? And so as I grew up and I started to establish identities with who I was, I, I thought of myself, and, and I'll get into these like more and more as time goes on, but I had like these beliefs that I wasn't enough. I had these beliefs that um, I, was, I was not good enough to have my father around. There were all these different mm -hmm. things, and I didn't know who I was as a young woman. So the first man that paid attention to me, I was like, oh my God, 
this guy likes me. Wow. So that was my first boyfriend that I ended up marrying and having three children with who I was with for 21 years. And, and in that journey, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about who I was, what I was allowing, what I was accepting into my life and what I was actually showing my children, teaching my children. And so I, I, I woke up one day and I, I remember looking at myself in the mirror and going, is, is this what you want for your life? Like, is you're this age, you've given the best years of your life to this man. Is this the way you want the rest of your life to live? Mm-hmm. And I thought, no, I don't want this. And, you know, not to say, you know, there were so many, there were so many things along the journey. I was the main provider. I worked three jobs at one time. I had the three kids. I had all of these things and I was grinding, 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 grinding. And I would come home to this guy and I'd say, well, what'd you do today? Oh, it was so hard. I had lunch at noon with my sister. And then before you knew it, I had to pick up the kids. I was so tired. <laughs> and I'm going like, what? the hell is going on here seriously so as time went on and and I I became more and more involved in in what I was doing then which was real estate and I still do that today and I, I was being introduced to so many different types of people and what's funny is in that realm I was also introduced to spirituality because I grew up in a Catholic home I grew up that you know, every Sunday you got to go to church. Oh, if you sin, you got to say three Hail Marys and three Hail Fathers, and then you're forgiven. And so I remember like making a mistake or sin or whatever it was. Okay, well, all I got to do is confess and say three Hail Marys and three Our Fathers, and I'm forgiven. And so I never had accountability associated with any of the decisions that I made because of those belief systems. And so as I became involved with some of my friends in real estate that had more of a spiritual side, and I started searching for different answers and, and going within more and knowing that there was more within me and knowing that I was worthy. I, I remember going to this one seminar and when I found out that I had this fundamental misperception that I was a piece of trash and I had been living my life based on this perception, I literally, the, the tears just started flowing down my face and I was crying and I had nonstop cry, like tears coming from my face. And from that moment on, I decided I was never going to allow myself to be considered a piece of trash. I had value. I had worth. And I was going to act as if and be that woman who had worth because my kids deserved better. I deserved better. Mm -hmm. And so that started the journey for me to pursue something other than Catholicism and to pursue something other than like, I don't look at anything. I don't look at any religion. I don't look at anything. I look at who can I be? How can I express myself better? And, and where is the infinite intelligence? You know, it's the, there's so much more to it than I can even put into words. And so throughout my life too, I, I've, always been, I've always been connected with fitness to some degree. However, I, w- I was, and I still consider myself a nerd. I like, I'm proud of my dorkiness. And I've never really fit into anything. I've never really had best friends. I've never had connections per se where you know a lot of people have like these buddy buddies or these oh I'm a cheerleader or I'm in sports or any of I, for, for some reason that eludes me <laughs> I've never ever had it and as I started you know like when I was 17 I remember my girlfriend and I we decided to get into fitness and at that time we started smoking cigarettes <laughs> and going like oh my life is so horrible <laughs> And then we were working out and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm working out and I'm smoking a cigarette. You know, like, what the hell am I doing? So I stopped smoking cigarettes like within two weeks and I started getting into weight training and cardio and different things. I had no idea what I was doing. So for literally like 20 something years, I was just looking at people at the gym, buying shape magazines and going, oh, I want to look like that. Oh, I want to look like that. Oh, I want to look like that. And just following anybody that looked the way I wanted to look. Yeah, so when I, when I finally decided that it was time to leave my ex now, it was a very, very challenging time for me because I felt like I was, I was not following through with a commitment that I had made when I, when I made that commitment to marry him. Mm-hmm. And I felt like he didn't follow through on that. So there was, there was a lot of duality going on at that point. And when I finally made the decision, he made it very, very difficult for me. And still to this day, it's difficult. And I have to pay him support. And- <laughs> Got, and I gave him the house. I gave him everything. And to this day, he still takes me to court. He still fights me. He still won't. I mean, it's, it's drama. So let's just say that I understand what it's like to go through the struggles of divorce mm-hmm. and the pain of divorce and losing everything. Mm-hmm. And so after I left him, 
I went through like a two and a half year journey of self-exploration and I decided that I was not going to be the same woman that I was going into the relationship that I did with my first and I completely reinvented who I was from a more powerful perspective and that's when I met Jay and then Jay and I have been married. It's going to be two years in April and we've just created a, a dynamic relationship. He has two girls. So I have two bonus girls plus my three and I'll get into that at some other point. And so I run a real estate business. Um, we also run a blog and I, I help Jay behind the scenes with some other like type of stuff with his, what he has going on. He has like way too much to even talk about that's going on. <laughs> we have a very active life to say the least. And we're very much into fitness. Um, the blog that we run is fabfitover40.com. Uh, we believe that many people as they age start to think that they do not, it's almost like, it's like a death sentence. You know, I'm all oh, this age. And, and I even remember when I was in my 30s, I actually started throwing away some of my sexy clothes because I thought, oh my God, I'm getting older. I'm not supposed to wear these things. And then when I met, and that's, my, my ex was very conservative. He used to tell me, you're going to make another man stumble if you wear that. And he would always like, like put me down if I was wearing something that he thought was too revealing. And so as I got older, I was like, oh, I can't wear that. I'm not supposed to wear it. I can't wear that. I can't. Ooh. Now that I'm with Jay, it's like, woohoo, vibrant free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's a completely different dynamic. So we, we believe that at the age we can actually improve who we are by consciously choosing to do some weight training. Yoga. Mm -hmm. what, there's so many different dynamics that are wrapped up in that. And so what I would like, my contribution to this would be that to, to let people know that regardless of who you are, what age you are, kids, no kids, whatever it is, you get to decide who you want to be at any given moment. Not the world, not your circumstances, you get to decide. So this is about us sharing our experiences, allowing you to see what we've done in this journey that's allowed us to find our true essence, our true power. And we want to share that with you. So on our first intro call, what are your final thoughts, Erica, on what you would like to express to others? Um, I'm just really excited to be here. I'm glad to be doing this with the two of you. Um, I feel like as um, Monica, as you said, I think the three of us came into each other's lives at a really um, interesting and exciting time. I feel like there's a lot of synergy. There's a lot of synchronicity. And um, I'm, I'm really excited to put our forces together, like the, the yoga, the nutrition, the fitness and stress, you know, um, just life management. And I'm just hoping that um, all of you guys watching and listening will find value in it and you know feel free to interact with us as much as you want but yeah thanks for watching thanks for being here yeah what about you miss krista <laughs> yeah thank you thank you all so much for tuning in and i'm really excited to be working with both of you i feel feel very honored in my path to be where i'm at at this age and and, and working with such powerful wonderful women and i look forward to contributing as well as growing and hopefully helping other people grow too and you know spiritually mentally energetically and um i hope to subscribe to erica's videos and start doing those more daily too <laughs> i love um yes. love erica's yoga and and getting big on them with Monica and Monica's Minute. I like, I, I like yeah. <laughs> very empowering. And, um, and feel free to reach out to me anytime with any uh, vegan questions or nutrition questions. Right, absolutely. And my final thoughts are each of you, everyone watching, you're not on this journey alone. We've all, are, we're all walking these, these paths and many times we feel so alone and we feel disconnected or whatever's going on in your life, just know you're not alone. We're here because we want to make a difference in your life. We wanna to express to you the things that we've done to help us overcome challenges, to allow us to live in our power, to let our light shine and to just fully express magnificently every essence that we possibly can because life is meant to be lived full throttle. There's no holding back. And so part of this is allowing you to see what's possible to see that life can be, oh my God, magnificently lived. And we wanna, we wanna express that each and every week to you. And we look forward to having questions from each and every person that's watching out there because we know that if you're asking questions then you're engaged. So we truly appreciate you watching and we, we are so excited to share a piece of us with you. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Twin Powers, activate! <laughs> <laughs>